Oh boy, I can't wait to show everyone my next masterpiece. <laughs> Hello, Collectors! Steven here. Again. Why do I even do that? It's my own channel. I don't know. It's the norm kind of thing on YouTube. A lot of people just do that to identify themselves. But anyway, today's review is of the SH Monster Arts Godzilla featuring Ava01. This Bondi Premium web shop and I believe Ava Store exclusive? I think, I'm not too sure, I should really fact check myself, but I'm not going to do that because I'm lazy, was not brought over to the United States and is a product of the Ava Cross Godzilla promo for Shin Godzilla. This odd repaint is kind of a laughing stock in the kaiju collector community because, let's face it, it does look pretty odd because it's not very coherent. So, enough talking, and let's take a look to see whether or not it's worth adding into your collection. So, yeah, we, uh, we kind of got another repaint of the 1995 mold here. And to be honest, the sculpt, there's nothing really new to say here. Yuji Sakai made it, blah, 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 suit accurate, yada, yada, three or more is copyrighted by the Seinfeld producers. But where the figure brings something new to the table is this Malibu Barbie's new hat, the Ava 01 paint scheme. The eyes match up with the mechs being yellow, and it has the little bitchin' flames coming out of it. Pretty cool. And that's about where the coherent design traits stop because it looks like the rest of the paint is just kind of thrown on there and whatever stuck, well, it stuck. The mouth is a bloody red, which does look neat, though do note the quality control scratch on the neck. Bleh. As you'll see throughout the review, the paint looks very goopy in some spots and in other spots it's spot on. Why? Because it's Bondi. When you're talking about the looks, it looks like instead of filling all the crevices and cracks in Godzilla's skin, they just used a heavy hand with a lot of paint and covered in areas, so paint bubbles and little gaps in the paint are apparent when you look at it up close. Anyway, the rest of Godzilla has a base color of purple, with the chest having a charcoal gray foundation with green stripes on the nips, and then high-waisted thong to show off them thick thighs. There's green on the thighs too, which looks like slash marks. The claws on both hands and the feet are yellow, which are pretty cool. The real star of the show here, I would say, would be the green translucent dorsal plates. They look phenomenal with the purple base of the plates, so regardless of how wacky you think this figure is, that is the saving grace, for me at least. And as you move down the figure, the dorsal plates... <sighs> they start to vary in degree of quality because you'd think that they can use only one type of green for the plates, right? Wrong. Each plate begins with a little bit more yellow or they stay the same color green. Why would they do that? Now, you'd think that they'd use a reasonable top coat, right? Well, when we get to the articulation section, you'll see that the paint is not necessarily secured correctly. But anyway, to go back to the dorsal plates on the main body, here's a look at them with a nice green light behind it. Pretty cool, huh? Here's a quick side-by-side -side comparison with the birth version, not rebirth. And yeah, I'm going to be pretty picky about that because I'm me. So you can see the differences in paint side-by-side. -side. So this is about the millionth time going over the 95 molds articulation, and there really aren't any differences from all the other ones, except for the actual tightness of the joints. So let's take a look. At least on mine anyway. So we have the jaw. Ball joint opens, closes, you can tilt it around a little bit. Mine is actually off center, which is not the best. I really don't want to pop it off and pop it back on because, you know, ultimate burning version. I hope you guys saw that review. But anyway, the head attaches into the neck on a ball joint and then the neck into the body on another ball joint. So you can get Godzilla to look up, down, left, right, side to side, all that fun stuff. The joint likes to pop off for me right here in that gap. So uh, I got to be careful with that. We do have ball jointed shoulders. We have bicep swivels, which are actually ball joints, it turns out. So you can move Godzilla's arm up. We have the hinge for the elbows. We have ball jointed wrists. So all that jazz. So yeah, that's something to be careful with when you move the joints around. You don't want to scrape Godzilla's parts together. I'll show you why in a bit. Actually, right now. So we have ball joints in the main body of the torso. As you can see here, very tight for me. If you saw in the unboxing video, the top part of Godzilla popped off. I finally was able to get it back in or on correctly. 
But as you can see here, you can move the ball joints around. Now, see, one of the issues with this figure, because everything is painted, let's zoom in here, so hopefully you can see this. Yeah, see this nice spot right there? Yeah, when fighting to move Godzilla around, you'll see that ab crunch there, how it pushes down. Yeah. Good uh, good job there, Bondi. Scratches up the paint. So that's that's lovely. That's lovely, isn't it? So the moral of the story is be careful with the articulation and don't move it around like you would, say, birth version. Okay, okay, so we do have the hips, which do have the gap, but for some reason, people are not able to figure out, even still, you can fix it. Ball jointed hips, like I said, no big deal. You can move Godzilla around at the legs, get him to go really wide or in. This knee joint on mine is stuck, which kind of sucks, but they're hinges. Well, they plug in on swivels, so you can spin them around. And then there's a hinge, both up here and down here. And then we have ball joints in where the ankle section would be. So you can get Godzilla to do a little bit of an ankle rocker there, which is pretty cool. And then this is the standard 95 mold tail. We have a whole bunch of ball joints with some parts that are just complete pieces of sculpt, like right up here on the tail. So as you can see here, you can get a nice bend, but nothing overly spectacular like you would be able to out of the 2000 Millennium Mold, the 2014 Mold, the GMK Mold, yeah, things like that. So all in all, the articulation for this guy is identical to what we've seen in the past. However, if yours is like mine, you will have some tight joints, which unfortunately can lead to some paint scratches. Why am I so eh about this? Because you know what? At this point... Uh, yeah. Accessories, unfortunately, they're really nothing new with the same splayed hand parts and the translucent purple beam effect and an all gray base. Now, we've gotten the beam effect and the gray base, I don't know how many times at this point. So, yeah. Kind of fitting, but they're weak. Why no AT field or the nerve vehicles they teased with the angels all those years ago? Eh. Here's the size comparison for all maybe three of you who don't know how big the 1995 mold is by this point in the SH Monster Arts life. So buy now, skip, or don't because this figure pretty much won't drop below MSRP. Paint's pretty alright, the articulation on mine has asked here QC because some joints are tight, others are not. But hey, it's modern day Bondi, so it's pretty alright. All in all, in some areas, the figure is spot on to the prototype and others, it falls short. So considering the dodgy quality control and the last few releases we've got, this is kind of a nice surprise. If you're an Ava fan and you like Godzilla, you'll be happy with this. If you like stylized stuff and you like action figures, this is right up your alley and down your gutter. If you're a diehard SH Monster Arts fan, chances are you already own this. Otherwise, this is a non-essential release, and you can sleep happy knowing you don't need to own this figure. Grah, hi everyone, it's Shin here again, and uh, I got a couple PSAs for you, but um, first up, I, I really do hope you liked my masterpiece. It was, it was really, really difficult to get that one down right, so yay me. But anyway... Uh, again, like the start of the video said, I'm uh, sorry, but the, the review is best watched with devices without blue light because for whatever reason, the camera and laptop screens with blue light, they, they make him look a little bit more blue-purple. So, yeah, just just bad combinations there. But anyway, there was supposed to be a skit at the beginning of the review where... She Avazilla gave a nice little song and dance. And he uh, kind of aggravated the rest of the gang, but uh, due to Steven's hectic production schedule, it, it kind of got scrapped and it's coming later. But Ultimate Burning Version's skid is coming too, so be on the lookout for that. Okay, now it's time to roll the end card. No screaming this time. Bye. Well, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching and be sure to like, subscribe, and drop a comment down below to share your thoughts. If you're interested in picking this figure up or others like it, check the description for some cool links to take you where you need to go. 
why don't you watch some more videos? Click the annotations on the screen now for more great content. Thanks again, and I'll catch you in the next video.